Pace Environmental Law Review. Volume 13 Fall 1995 Number 1 Article. Awakening a Sleeping Giant, Creating a Quasi-Private Cause of Action for Revoking Corporate Charters in Response to Environmental Violations. By Thomas Lindsay. I. Introduction. Individuals who wish to carry on a business as a corporation have been subject to procedures which have evolved from colonial American special chartering to the present-day process of incorporating according to applicable state general incorporation statutes. Through the process of incorporation, corporate owners gain access to limited liability and the corporation is granted the judicial legal fiction of personhood, which guarantees a corporation many of the same constitutional rights individuals are entitled to under United States law. While the corporate entity does receive many benefits from its personhood status, it very often gains benefits above those of normal citizens. Although a corporation is held liable for all of its actions, corporations often violate federal and state environmental laws and continue to operate unscathed. Corporate liability for environmental violations, although extensive, does not harm many corporations as they are able to pass the totality of their overall costs on to the consumer. The power of the attorney general of a state to revoke corporate charters, and thereby end the corporate life, may be the only effective deterrent for corporate polluters. In early American history, the corporate existence was viewed as a grant of privilege from the state, and corporations were allowed to exist only to perform a public service considered of general value. What was once the exclusive domain of colonial American legislatures, the power to grant charters to corporations, has fallen under the control and administration of state regulatory agencies designated specifically for that purpose. Thus, the granting of a corporate charter, once designated as a special charter and as a creation of the state, has disintegrated into merely an administrative process that exercises little, if any, substantive restraints on the activities of the corporation. The agency designated by statute to approve the charter, in most states, merely reviews the submitted articles of incorporation and determines whether all the necessary information has been provided, and whether all the papers have been properly executed. States also review the submitted articles to discover whether there is anything in the Articles of Incorporation that violates state law or policy. Along with this move towards administrative informality in the arena of initial incorporation has come the inevitable shift in public opinion towards routine acceptance of a corporation's right to exist. The chartering of a corporation has become a routine exercise and has evolved from being perceived as a privilege by law and popular culture to being a mere formality finalized by the official filing of forms necessary for incorporation. Even in light of recent wide-scale environmental and public health damage caused by the direct activities of large corporations, public scrutiny tends to be directed towards the levying of criminal and civil penalties rather than an attack aimed at the corporate heart itself. It seems that the public has forgotten that the states retain power over the corporate fiction, not only through the prosecution of criminal acts, but through direct control over the corporate charter itself and its authority to revoke the charter if the corporation abuses or misuses its charter privileges. 49 states and the District of Columbia still possess statutes that grant an agent of the state the power to revoke corporate charters. These statutes grant the Attorney General the discretion to initiate proceedings to revoke corporate charters whenever the corporation has breached one of the criterion established by the legislature in the statute. These statutes, widely used until the turn of the century to challenge the existence of corporations, have become surplusage in state statutory codes due to the refusal of state officers to exercise these powers in light of the increasing reliance by the populace and the state on the corporate structure for the provision of income and sustenance. Other reasons for this disfavor include the close relationship of corporations and the political functioning of the state and the emergence of the regulatory state which provides limited legal remedies for corporate abuses. These unused statutes accomplish little if they are not exercised frequently by the state attorney general to curb corporate abuses. A quasi-private cause of action, tailored to challenge the discretion exercised by the attorney general in deciding not to bring a charter revocation action, is necessary to facilitate a process whereby communities can undertake direct challenges to the corporate existence. Communities often are affected by corporate environmental violations the most, and therefore, they would benefit greatly by reviving the use of revocation statutes and subsequently creating a private cause of action. By using the framework offered by this article, it is hoped that a gradual re-democratizing of the corporate community can begin to allow injured citizens to regain control of previously unaccountable corporations which violate environmental laws. The difficulty of proving causation in meritorious environmental litigation directed at corporate activities provides another argument in favor of direct community authority over corporate charters. 
Many times, corporations remain unscathed by simply using defenses aimed exclusively at challenging the tenuous causation chain despite action through direct mechanisms, citizen suit statutory provisions, or state environmental agencies that pursue civil and criminal penalties for enforcement. Part 2 of this article presents a brief history of the corporate charter from the early American colonial period to the present day while examining pertinent case law that has substantially developed the law governing the repeal and amendment of charters. Part 3 of the article concentrates on the state law of New York, which grants discretion to the Attorney General to revoke corporate charters whenever certain key mandated standards of conduct are breached. This part also explores the history of the charter revocation case law in New York, and examines the threshold activities established by statute and the judiciary which trigger corporate charter revocation. The focus is only on charter revocation statutes and does not include discussions of the various other methods of corporate accountability, including shareholder derivative actions, ultra vires actions, and corporate criminal sanctions. Part 4 of this article proposes a quasi-private cause of action where citizens could obtain judicial review of the Attorney General's decision not to bring a revocation action. Such an action may lead to revocation of corporate charters when the Attorney General is reluctant to prosecute. This part also examines the hurdles that need to be overcome when seeking judicial review of the Attorney General's decision not to bring a revocation action. The New York judiciary's increasing willingness to grant mandamus to compel the exercise of prosecutorial discretion and the recognition of an equitable exception to the general rule of non-reviewability of prosecutorial discretion is explored. Also examined are the policy concerns supporting the non-reviewability of prosecutorial decisions, and a possible narrow exemption to the presumption of non-reviewability which avoids these policy concerns. The proposed exemption would concentrate upon the unique two-step nature of the Charter Revocation Statute and conclude that judicial review should be exercised over Attorney General decisions made under this category of statutes. Finally, Part 5 of this article explores and proposes possible alternative corporate forms that would allow for greater community control of corporate activities.